Hello and welcome to Dutchman Seb. I'm Sebastian Tulin and I'm a mechanical engineer and motoring journalist. Today, thanks to Mazda SA, we're joined by the Mazda 3 Astina Plus 2 litre automatic in hatchback. I've had the car for the better part of a week and I'm going to tell you a bit more about the car now. Let's take a first look. Got color in your cheeks. Do you ever get that feel that you can't shift the tide that sticks around like summit in your teeth? Are there some aces up your sleeve? Have you no idea that you're in deep? I dreamt about you nearly every night this week. How many secrets can you keep? There's this tune I found that makes me think of you somehow And I play it on repeat Until I fall asleep Spilling drinks on my settee Do I want to know If this feeling flows both ways Sort of hoping that you'd stay Say tomorrow day Crawling back to you Never thought I'd call and run You're right here Cause I always do Maybe I'm too Busy being lost To fall for So right in you Now I'm calling through Crawling back to you Are you ready? Let's get inside and take a look how she drives. Mazda 3 comes standard with start-stop technology in all their cars. You start by applying your foot on the brake, getting a green light, pressing the start button. This engages the heads-up display and your navigation screen with audio controls. I'll switch off again so that you can have a look and see how the screen pops down. All right. The Mazda 3 comes in 16 different variants, starting from the 1.6 models in a five-door hatchback or a four-door saloon, and then moving up to the two-liter range, also with a five-door hatchback or a four-door saloon range. The starting prices for the Mazda 1.6 Active are $258,900 moving all the way up to the top of the range model which we're driving here today which is the 2 litre Astina Plus which is in uh, automatic and 6 speed gearbox 5 door hatchback which is going for 415,000 Rand. That's a lot of variants to choose from when you're deciding what car to go for. So how do you decide which car to pick when you've got 16 to choose from in one range? I'll make it easy for you. The 2 litre Astina Plus model which I'm driving here today is standard with 5 euro, euro end cap safety awards and it's got all the standard features for safety. The first one being lane keeping assist which has um, radar detectors for the white lines on the road with a front um, camera on the road to tell you when you're veering off your lane. And that basically gives you feedback through the steering wheel which can be set up to give you a light nudge or a heavy rumble and this also helps you to steer, stay into the lane by applying torque to the wheels which keeps you inside of the lane so that you don't veer across um, into another person's lane and this is quite nice when you're getting tired and fatigued and helps you to stay alert and maintain your, 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 your true course the next safety feature is automatic brake assist it's got a radar in front of the car which detects when cars in front of you are stopping and it automatically gives you a warning in the heads-up display in front of you and if you don't brake in soon enough 
it brakes for you, making sure that you avoid frontal collision. It has the same sensor at the back to warn you and prepare for impact for rear collision. What it does as well is it primes the gears to make the gears ready so that when you press the pedal, you have instantaneous stopping power. This is quite a great feature, uh, especially when you're standing in standstill traffic and the guy in front of you suddenly slams on the brakes and you haven't got a lot of following distance. So it can save your radiator and a few fender benders here and there. Um, the next feature we've got to talk about is new for Mazda and new for the world. It's called G-Factoring. G-Factoring works with cornering and it picks up feedbacks from your steering wheel, which applies torque to the front wheels to make the nose dive in corners so that you get more downforce and grip on the front tires. This provides better handling, less understeer, and a better cornering power so that you've got more maneuverability. This helps really well when you're taking corners with a bit of a sporty thrive. This car also has a very nice feature which is called blind spot monitoring. It has detectors on the side mirrors and from behind and it can tell when a car is in your blind spot. You'll see by the photo I'm going to insert into the video with the blind spot indicator shown on the side mirror with a little yellow car that comes up and if you're indicating to change lane it also comes up with a warning indicator. This prevents you from turning into another lane when there's somebody in your blind spot that you can't see. Even though this room's got quite a lot of room around to have a look and see, you're always going to have blind spots in a car, so it's quite a nifty feature to have. Something that comes uh, in this car, also which is great to save fuel economy, is called iStop technology. And this works with the new Sky Active um, technology that they've applied to the vehicles. And basically what happens is when you're braking, it picks up all the lost energy from the, the braking in deceleration and this is picked up by an alternator which is then stored in a capacitor. That energy is then converted into starting up the car again when you are at a stop sheet or a robot for a prolonged period of time and the car is switched off to save a fuel. It's also used to run electronics in the car like your radio, your music, aircon and all your other features like lighting instead of draining the car battery every time. The ride quality in the Mazda is really comfortable. It's got a nice soft feel to it and it's easy over bumps, lovely for around town. You barely even feel the road beneath your wheels. However, this doesn't really compromise your cornering ability. The suspension stiffens up and hardens when it detects movement through the steering wheel in a corner and with the G-Vectoring uh, technology, this provides downforce in the front wheels with better traction and more grip so that you get less understeer and not much body roll. So cornering becomes a breeze. I even took this car around Quantumon's Cliff up near Plotter Cliff and the, road handled, the car handled the road beautifully, taking corners with absolute ease. There was no problem there anywhere with taking corners at even a bit of a zoom zoom Mazda speed. Notice above me here, you can see blue sky. That's because this car comes fitted with a power sunroof. And you'll see in the video that I'll show how the power roof opens and closes at a touch of a button, which is found here above the center console. It's a really nifty feature, and it kind of makes you feel like the car's got a bit of a convertible feel to it. So you can drive around around the beach and the, and the beachfront with a top down. This kind of makes it fun for getting some wind in your hair. Mazda 3 has come a long way and a lot of people talk about this new Sky Active technology but not many people really know what Sky Active technology is or what it's about. Well, it's simple really. When Mazda broke away from Ford in 2014, the engineers were given the task of redesigning the engine and the car completely with a blank piece of paper. This meant scrapping all known ideas of how engines and cars work and starting a completely different design. From the chassis to the gearbox to the engine, everything reworked. And what they've done is they've utilized all the amount of efficiency that they could get out of the car's engine, um, harnessing all the energy from the fuel. Most people don't know this, but most cars run at a 50% efficiency rating, having lost most of the energy to heat and not converting all the energy from the fuel into usable kinetic energy to move the car. So Mazda has done a great job in improving these efficiencies. They've increased compression ratios in the engine. They've redesigned the shape of the piston to avoid early knocking and early firing. 
They've got multi-jets and multi-inlets for the firing orders to be able to control the environment inside the, the combustion chambers. They've redesigned the chassis using lightweight aluminium compounds and high tensile steels to make an exoskeleton shell that makes it standard with a five-star Euro NCAP safety rating. So you can imagine now they've shed a lot of weight without losing any of the safety features and without compromising the rigidity of the, of the chassis. They've also made huge improvements to the gearbox following uh, Volkswagen's uh, DSG gearboxes with the twin uh, clutch system. And this really makes driving really fantastic, especially with the gear changes being almost instantaneous. They've got it down to a few milliseconds. So these are the kind of things that Mazda have worked with. They've also come up with things like G-vectoring, which I've spoken about earlier, and things like the suspension and the ride height, which is um, adjusted accordingly to the driving style and the way that the car handles on the road. All of these features work together in the car to produce a sky actually technology. Mazda also talk about the Kodo design language. This is based on animal instincts, animal uh, behavior, even people throwing a dart and shooting an arrow. All of these things are used to design the car's styles and looks to make it aggressive and the front of the car looks like it's an animal ready to pounce and attack. These are all the features that you can find on the Mazda 3s and going forward to the Mazda CX-5s as well. It's the kind of thing that makes the car set aside from the rest of the pack, making it look very unique with agile features. And this all works together with the sky Active technology to make the car really appealing for the young market. I would definitely recommend looking at this car when considering a new luxury um, hatchback. It's definitely got all the features, all the comforts and a lot of the looks. So put it on your bucket list to have a look at and test drive. The, the gear changes in the Mazda, even though they're smooth and efficient with the dual clutch system, changes are really quick, but sometimes it can be a little bit erratic when the car is not quite sure what you're doing or what you want. For example, when you're cruising along and you need a little bit of extra power and you put your foot down, it doesn't quite know whether to drop two gears or three gears or just the one. And sometimes if you've not got your foot all the way down, it doesn't drop gears enough to give you the power that you need for overtaking. So. I think Mazda could still put a bit of work into the gearbox to make it a little bit more responsive. But I think for regular driving around town, it does the job just about right. And when you really put the foot down, it does go. It just takes a little bit more responsive. It's not really a sporty car, so I wouldn't go so far to say it's got Ford Focus ST or Golf GDI sporting ability. But it's definitely a luxury car to drive and gives you the right quality and the right comfort that you want out of a good car in this price range. The boot space is smaller than usual. Most cars in its class have a slightly wider boot and a bit of a longer boot, but when you drop the back seats with the 60-40 split, you get a massive capacity to back to load up for going away for the weekend. And if it's just you and a mate or a wife, then you've got plenty of space to put in your camping gear at the back. So boot space, I don't think is an issue in this category. Space-wise in the Mazda, it's quite comfortable in the front seat, lots of legroom. But when you extend the front seats all the way to the back, the legroom becomes a little bit constricting for taller adults, especially for people over six foot. However, for kids and small people, it's really not an issue. You've got enough legroom back there. It's only when you're a bit tall then space becomes an issue. The Mazda 3 Astina Plus comes with a range of features, from automatic windscreen wipes, which detect when it's raining on the windshield and automatically determine how fast and how frequently to put the wiper blades on. You also get automatic lights which go on at night time and if you have your bright feature or high beam feature activated then it also determines when to activate your your brights. This feature is also very nice when driving along um, dark roads at night that are badly lit because the moment it detects an oncoming headlight or a car, it dims the, the main beams from bright to regular. And this is quite a nice feature because it has adaptive headlights um, using the LED technology, which, um, which expand quite wide um, in your field of depth, giving you a much wider view on the roads, especially dark, uh, dark roads that are badly lit. One thing many people don't talk about when it comes to safety features in cars is emergency braking and how quickly you can come to a standstill when there's a pedestrian crossing the road and you need to stop really quickly. So I'm going to perform an emergency stop 
from 60 k's an hour and let's see what it feels like in this car with the ABS features. That's from 60 to stop in about 10 meters. The nice thing about this car, it's got rear view park cameras with park distance control and a heads up display which shows you um, what's behind you. You've also got um, radars in the back which detects pedestrians crossing behind you, shopping trolleys and cars passing by. And it gives you an alert warning to tell you when cars are passing by. I'm going to reverse now and you can have a look and see what it looks like from behind. see exactly where the car is going to end up with that yellow box in front there and then you can plan your, your drive around that. I'll show you once again, pop into reverse, there comes the camera heads up, pops up over there quite nicely. So we're backing into nice spaces and corners, you can see what's behind you and then it tells you how far you can go before you hit objects. little pop-up heads-up display I don't really like it's kind of gimmicky and it makes me feel like I'm driving a Nintendo Wii it makes me feel like it was a bit of an afterthought like it was put in at the last minute it wasn't really considered in its entirety I think they should have gone the route most other car manufacturers do when they project the heads-up display directly onto the front windshield this would have made it feel a lot more realistic and not like you're playing some Game Boy infotainment screen I feel doesn't really integrate really well with the dashboard and it could have been a bit better thought out like built into the dashboard or where the screen comes out of the dashboard when the car turns on like in the A3 I think this could be done with a bit more work the driver's side has these buttons over here for adjusting the seat electronically by pushing the button over there brings the seat forward and backwards also raise the right height of the seat or lower the heat seat height. Also has a nice electronic lumbar support, which you can see over here. These features are only found on the driver side, with the manual side being found on the passenger sides. The Mazda 3 comes with this lovely infotainment system which has communication linked via Bluetooth to your cell phone which imports your cell phone contacts and then with the controls on the steering wheel allows you to make and receive phone calls and you can also use voice guided um, aids to be able to tell the computer what to do like dialing a friend or navigating you to a place or putting your favorite soundtrack on it has lovely entertainment musical features where you've got options like FM radio, AM radio, AHA, Stitcher, Bluetooth connected to your phone, USB 1 and USB 2 slots, CD as well as auxiliary connections. The CD drive is located down here and beneath the AC controllers. You've got this lovely button in the center console here which allows you to change the different stations and to navigate. You've also got this sideways and up and down actions that you can use, volume control found over here and then you've also got controls on the steering wheel, you'll find your USB flash drives in here and your SD cards, you've also got a cigarette lighter there for charging, going back to the home screen again, you've got navigation this basically tells you where you are, you can set a new point, you can get navigation info like traffic, help nearby, like police services, hospitals, GPS information, country information, you can check for places nearby and you can filter them by category, you can go to fuel stations, parking areas, dealers, car servicing, accommodation, airports, automotive business, cafes and such and such, the list goes on. You've also got the option to change from 2D to 3D modes. 
and these are all the features that come standard in the Mazda Astina Plus. You've also got some lovely applications on here which give you fuel economy monitoring, tells you your i-stop technology, how much you've extended your trip by by the i-stop technology, nice graph readings with how your fuel's been used with the average for this drive. Then you've also got vehicle status monitor. This gives you warning guides and maintenance. You'll see there's no warnings found at the moment. And the maintenance will tell you how many kilometers you've got to do oil changes or rotate your tires. And it'll tell you how often to schedule your car in. Going into the settings, you've got all sorts of features that you can customize, like the pop-up heads-up display controls for the, the height, the brightness, the display information. You've got display on your navigation, mode, daytime, nighttime, contrast, brightness. You've got safety with all your features like your smart city brake support, your blind spot monitoring, your lane keeping assist systems, speed limit warnings, driver alert attention, parking sensor indicators, you've got sound settings for bass and treble and fade. I'll talk about the sound system now. You've got Bose system in this model, the Astina Plus. You've got clock adjusting with time, GPS sync, time formats 24 or 24 hours, daylight saving times, time zones, You've got vehicle rain sensor wiper settings, door lock settings, turn indicator settings, lighting, speed alarms, connected Bluetooth devices, system with temperature and distance in kilometers or miles or centigrade and Fahrenheit. So the list goes on, the features are endless. Talking about the music, if you're anything like me, you like to listen to a good music track while you're in the car and this sound system in here is like being in a live concert you've got both sound systems with 10 speakers around you've got speakers up on the dash over there in the center you've got speakers in the corner over there you've got more speakers in the corner on this side and then the usual speakers in the doors and at the back with the subwoofer and the boot so you can be rest assured that the quality in here is fantastic and absolutely superb and I'm quite a music person myself and I can tell you that the clarity in here is beautiful sometimes clarity is more important to people than the loudness of the sound system and the quality in here is 100% guaranteed thanks to the Bose sound system the AC control in the car is really nifty as well you've got dual climate control so that if you're not feeling like you want to share the same temperature with the rest of the car the driver has his own settings for his air coming out and then you've got dual climate control for the rest of the passengers on the left hand side of the vehicle. This can be quite handy when you like to have cold air blowing at you but everybody else is complaining that the ride's getting a bit too cold. So that's quite a nice feature to have. You can adjust them independently from each other. The Mazda 3 Astina Plus comes with a nifty little sport button which can be found in the center console just in front of the gear knob. This can be activated by pushing it forward which then activates a light on the center dash telling you that you're in sport mode. This makes the gear shifts faster and a little bit more responsive in the acceleration with the braking being a bit more reactive. This gives you a really good feel of what the car is like on the open road when you want to give it a bit of legs. Nothing really to rave home about but enough to get you excited that's for sure. The Mazda 3 has retractable side mirrors which can open and close at the touch of a button on the, on the side console by the driver's side which is very useful when you're parking in narrow alleyways so that your wing mirrors don't get taken off by cyclists or motorbikes or people driving too close to the car also make it useful when parking in tight spots That's all from me at Dashman Seb Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel